Merry Christmas. I'm Neil A. Caruso, the producer of the WCBS Small Business Spotlight with Joe Connolly, sponsored by BNB Bank Community Banking from Montauk to Manhattan. This week, a very special best of. Here's my choice for one of the interviews that I found the most interesting this year, but they're all interesting. You can look back at them. But I really enjoyed talking with the founder of New York Sports Tours. Hey, I'm Joe Connolly. Today we'll talk about sports, the business of sports. And, you know, sports brings millions of us together. We may disagree on which team we support, but many, many of us, probably most of the country, have sports teams that they follow, and uh, it, it tugs our heartstrings and it entertains us. And Kevin O'Keefe, my guest today, has built a business in the sports business. It's called New York Sports Tours. Kevin, what does New York Sports Tours do? Specifically. Well, all, thank you for having me, Joe. I yeah. appreciate being here. New York Sports Tours was created, and I must do a shout out to our founder, Jordan Spreckman, who I work with, to preserve and bring to life the history of sports in New York, but probably more importantly, to show how sports in greater New York, the history of sports, has helped shape culture and society in the city, the nation, and also the world. So how do you do that? Well, we thought of a lot of different ways we could do that, and right. we came up with what we thought is the best, and that is to put a museum on wheels, basically. So we have a three-hour tour through more than 70 points of interest from sports history in a vehicle, luxury vehicle, and we also have on the screen, as you're going to these places, more than 30 mini documentaries uh, that happen to be narrated by a uh, well-known sportscaster, Mary Carrillo. So we have a guide in the, uh, a host, a guide. I'm also bringing you information, but a lot of it is the immersive elements that people feel, wow, I understand now why sports is so important, why sports matters. What uh, sports sites around New York make the most impression on people? What makes them go, wow? Uh, there have been four Madison Square Gardens, and uh, so people don't know a lot of the history of Madison Square Garden, but the things that have happened there, and I think those are the, the things that we can safely say, uh, the things that have happened in those four gardens made a huge difference. You take them to all four garden locations? We do. Of course, only one is standing, but right. we but do. The, where, where were the other three locations? Well, it's a, the first two were in the same location uh, on 26th Street in Madison. It's called right. Madison Square Garden, as you probably know, because it was right next to Madison Square Park. Right. And uh, the other one was on 8th between 49th and 50th. That was the third garden. Wow. And in the late 60s, uh, we gave, got the garden we have today. So does the van stop sometimes and let them gawk? Uh, Absolutely. In fact, one place that's really, really popular is the 69th Regiment Armory. Uh, you might say, why? Well, it's an armory. Well, that's really arguably the Knicks' first home arena. They did play some games uh, in the garden, but they couldn't really get a lot of dates. So their home arena was really the 69th Re Regiment Armory. Where the antique show is held yes, now, exactly, I think, right? Exactly, and uh, many other events, non-sports events, but they're the, at one time, the indoor world record uh, uh, for the marathon was was set there. Uh, roller derby was first televised from there. There's a lot, and that's one thing I must yeah. say that we don't just go into the, the major sports. We go into a lot, uh, dozens of sports, and how they help. And the thing about the roller derby, there's a lot I could talk all day about this, but they CBS actually televised the first roller derby from there, and they shot from it. From the armory on the, the east armory. side? Yeah, yeah, on Lexington Avenue. So they shot it in a way that it looked like there were thousands of fans there. There weren't. So people would come running to their, their next uh, roller derby saying, I, this looks like it's super popular. And a lot of people took well, those camera angles and said, we can make a small event look big, not just in sports, but outside of sports. What so year a, was that? 1940s. 1940s? <laughs> So there's almost nobody watching even, so they could experiment however they wanted. On TV, it it didn't like look that watching. way. On TV, right? it looked yeah. like they were watching because of the way that they shot it and put people down front. And Now look, here's what happens with your business. This is very rare. I have to remind myself, we're here to talk business, not <laughs> sports. Um, so who is your typical customer on the tours? That's a great question because uh, on the surface you would say it's a sports fan, but we worked really hard over two years of crafting the narrative to make sure that it was just as attractive to the non-sports fan. And we've been really surprised that 
even more than that, even someone who says they're not a history fan or a sports fan loves it because we have a lot of fun things that we do along the way um, as far as interacting with our guests. But are they husband and wife, men, middle-aged? Are they from New York? Are they tourists? Tell me more. We really find 40-plus uh, is, our, is our core demo. But what we find is a lot of those in the 40 over, they may say, hey, I have to bring my son on this tour, so I will be back because they need to understand that the sports that we see today is nothing like it was over the past 150 years. Do a lot of them do that? Do they come they back do. with this son? I bet um, they do. Yeah, Sal Marciano, who was a, a, a well-known sportscaster here in New York, he's now retired. He took the tour and he said, I need to take my nephew on this tour because he needs to understand where sports came from, how it developed and became the big business it is today. They're New Yorkers or they're tourists? It's both. So what we found out is that uh, mostly tourists. We had uh, we've had people from Australia and uh, the UK as a, of two recent examples. But we find that the people in New York may be more jaded coming in, saying I've already know these places. But once we get them in the vehicle, we surprise them, and they say, uh, in many cases, there's tons of things I didn't know about sports or about the history of New York. I'm really amazed at uh, what I just experienced with New York sports tours because I didn't know what to expect and and again as a native New Yorker who has my finger on the pulse of sports in this city I learned things today that I didn't know before. The, the way we present the narrative it's really seeing the history of New York and America through the prism of sports. Now how did you come up with such a compelling tour guide program partly on video in the van. Did, re did historians research this for you? Did you research it? How did you create this great content? Did you resell and resell and resell? Right. Uh, there was a, uh, a gentleman, Bill Shannon. Um, he's no longer with us, but he was probably the greatest sports historian in the city of New York. He was good friends with Jordan Spreckman, the founder of New York Sports Tours. I started speaking to Jordan how we can take all the research that Jordan has done and that Bill had done and that I jumped in there and helped with. So for two years, we just researched and researched and, and we overturned a lot of myths about sports in New York that um, came through because we are so focused on being historically accurate. That's so important to us. You know, most people write a book to start a business. It strikes me you could write a book, but then it might hurt the tour business. Because you have this great content, what? That's, that's a great, uh, that's very uh, smart because we feel the same way. What you see in the vehicle, a lot of it is exclusive. We, in some cases, have, we own the old uh, archival video or stills that you can't see anywhere else. So anybody who takes our tour, look, we, we could do this tour for, for 20 hours. So we, want, we, we think three hours is a sweet spot. But everybody who takes our tour gets a password for our private uh, online museum with more exclusive mini documentaries narrated by Mary Carrillo and things like historical artifacts um, that we own, that we have uh, write-ups on what their hist historical significance is. So you're right. We do feel we have an exclusive, um, we have exclusive content that we don't want to just open up, at least have, not at this point, to everyone. Do you use the access to that archive in your pre-sales pitch or do you don't even absolutely you do you, yeah. you say if you take this tour you'll also absolutely get. so if, if uh, <coughs> and we do teaser so if you go to um new york sports tours website new york sports dot tours we have uh dot tours dot tours i've never heard that we wanted to reflect um our brand instead of dot uh, com dot, dot tours new york sports dot tours um there's a page called museum so you can actually see some teaser content for example, something that we own is the second Madison Square Garden in the early 1900s, uh, some video shot from a film shot from Madison Square Park. You're not going to find this on the internet, but that's just some teaser. When you go on the private online site, you'll see th some things that I think that are pretty incredible. How do you find customers? I imagine you have to do it. They don't all find you. How do you sell the business? Right now, and we just launched in June. Uh, so. We're, we're new, but we just started our, our digital plan, and that digital plan is very multi-tiered, and that includes a lot of, obviously, targeting online. 
Um, but a big part of the business is corporate um, groups and other private groups because we can um, customize and privatize experiences. Give us an example. You say you might customize tours for a business group. What's an example of you, something you do there? Right. So. Um, Concierge at a, at a top level hotel in, in New York, we met with, and he said, We have a special group of customers that want high end experiences, things that no one else has access to. So, we in that case customized a program where, and by the way, every tour that, that everyone takes, that's just part of it. You end at Keene Steakhouse, and then you have. We'll get uh, to that. I wanted, I'm so, holding that for the surprise. Uh, so, that we have a special guest who will join them either during the tour, but, but at the minimum to join them after the tour. And that special guest is a bigger name sports personality than you would get on a regular tour. So do you, then you don't customize the sites, you customize the We lunch. also can customize the sites. We've had some uh, customers who say, can you take us to Yankee Stadium as part of your, because we don't go to Yankee Stadium now. It takes a lot of time to get there. But we've customized so that we're able to take our guests on part of our tour and then a special um, uh, tour leg that takes them to Yankee Stadium just in time for the game. What, what percent want to go to Yankee Stadium? Once they see the tour, they don't need to go there. because A lot of them think, well, I think we're going to go to City Field. I think we're going to go to you know, Yankee Stadium. Because, but once they understand there's history in Manhattan about the development of sports, you go to 34th and Lexington, and we, because of the research we've done, show why baseball as we know it was first played there. And I think that's a lot more immersive and, in our case, um, original than going to Yankee Stadium. And having said that, we love Yankee Stadium. Brian Cashman, the general manager, um, uh, was a big part of our launch event. He, he, he did a wonderful job talking about why this is a needed part of New York um, tourism. But we feel we have a very original, exclusive um, Experience. Brian Caspin said he, he actually compared us to Hamilton, which I thought was <laughs> pretty, oh pretty awesome. Um, because this story is exclusive. We, will, we don't plan on printing it to anywhere outside the tour. It just strikes me um, two things that the successful businesses now offer real high quality products. I see that all the time. And if you owners were not so dedicated to the history, the business would not be as credible. It wouldn't be as successful. It's, well, it's so clear. Right, Joe, you know what it is? It's the passion. And I, I don't know if that's really what you're, you're, you're going toward. We will not hire anybody for New York sports tours that doesn't have or feel the passion about why sports matters. Uh, we know it does, and we show that it does, and we have, we have like a sound bite from President Obama talking about why sports does matter. There's a direct line between Jackie Robbins and me standing here. We have a sound bite uh, from somebody who interviewed uh, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King many years ago, and he said, Dr. King told me that I'm not the founder of the civil rights movement, as a lot of people right. credit me. Jackie Robinson is the founder of the civil rights movement. Wow. So those are the type of things that if you don't have the passion for that history and that knowledge, then, and I think that passion resonates as a business to show people that we're here for the long run because we care about the content. And um, just to wrap up, uh, they know they're going to have a lunch with some sports celebrity, right? Correct. Um, but they don't know who? In some cases, they do. Yeah, okay. So, uh, for example, we have a, the 40th anniversary of uh, uh, a case where Melissa Ludke, um, who is a female reporter uh, for Sports Illustrated, she sued Major League Baseball to get access to the New York Yankees clubhouse, right. which we're not allowed. So sh uh, she's coming up to be a special guest on tour, and we wanted to promote that, so yes, right. they know. But we've had others like Shep Messing, a soccer player um, who played for the Cosmos, a great guy. and. Uh, a lot of the people on that tour didn't know he was going to be on board. Wow. What a fun business. You, got, you must be pinching yourselves at how well this is taking off. If, if everyone goes to our website, we have over 30 media reviews there. I, I couldn't ask for, for a better response. But we put, you know, look, so much about business is, is, is work ethic and hard work. And that's what I try to Two strive years, you say, you built this business? Two years, we didn't want to rush into it. We spent a lot of, of uh, blood and sweat getting this 
production right, and we see it as a production. We see our competitors as Broadway shows. That's the level that we want to keep it. Well, you say that a lot of your customers say they're going to bring their son back or daughter or to show or them or grandson. I'm going to bring my son on your tour. You just sold a tour right here. Two tours you're, right here. You're welcome anytime. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you very much.